High Intensity Training, or HIT training, pioneered by Arthur Jones, creator of the Nautilus machines, an approach to building muscle with very simple principles. Infrequent workouts, low volume training, sessions that are generally short in duration, but made up for with extreme levels of intensity. Jones's basic philosophy on training was, one set to failure is all you need to adequately build muscle mass, provided that that one set is taken all the way to momentary muscular failure. The original poster boy for HIT training was teenage Mr. America, Casey Viator. During the high volume era of bodybuilding, Arthur Jones had trained him using low volume, high intensity training principles with just three full body sessions per week, generally one set per muscle group, but with brutal intensity. Because these sessions were so intense, workouts became much less frequent. There were even periods of time where Casey reportedly spread these sessions out to upwards of just once every five days at a time. Now, regardless of how different this training system sounds, if you looked at his physique, it made you consider if there were possibly any benefits to such an extreme approach to training. With some of his insane feats of strength, as well as one of the most impressive teenage physiques I had ever seen in my personal opinion, Casey became one of my early inspirations to try HIT training. And many of my early trials with HIT were heavily influenced by his routines. But we'll touch a bit more on that shortly. In addition to Casey, Mike Menser was an early HIT advocate who eventually took these principles and created an extremely abbreviated approach to this training system by training even more infrequent, but taking the intensity levels beyond what most sane individuals would even consider doing. Things like training beyond failure, taking the muscle all the way to concentric failure when you can no longer lift the weight, and then all the way to eccentric failure, doing negative reps with a spotter until you no longer could and then finally reaching a third failure point with a static contraction. All this done in one set. This is the type of HIT training that back then, and even today, most people would see and cringe at. And before I give you my personal opinion on it, as well as tell you my experience, it's important to note that HIT training has a cult-like following. And underneath the umbrella of high-intensity training, there's slight variations to many training methods. Things like abbreviated training, or hard gainer training, low volume training, HIT training, and this particular method Menser created was known as heavy duty training. This heavy duty training method was so extreme that the majority of guys who do follow high intensity training style don't even want to be associated with it. Eventually the system was adapted again in the bodybuilding community years later when Dorian Yates studied Menser and Jones's philosophies. Yates had built a system that he used to build one of the most massive Mr. Olympia physiques in history. Starting early in his career with a more abbreviated approach of training with just three sessions per week, Yates eventually implemented the low volume aspect of HIT training into the basic bro split many of you now know today. One large body part per session, possibly alongside a smaller muscle group, and added in multiple exercises per body parts, just like traditional training. But Yates kept the low volume and extreme failure training intact by doing just one main work set to failure and beyond on each movement. This blood and gut style training that he coined is what most people today would consider HIT training. But again, it's important to note that with so many different variations to HIT training, one program might look completely different than another, and the results may vary drastically. For the purposes of this video, going forward when I mention high intensity training, I'm going to assume you understand I'm referring to any type of system that uses a low amount of working sets per muscle group. Not always, but sometimes even as low as just one single working set. All sets performed to failure, and many times even beyond failure training using intensity techniques, and generally less frequent training sessions per week. With that said, now let's jump into my experience with HIT. My first experience with HIT came about five years after I first started bodybuilding. Early on, I started with basic bro splits and had limited success. Doing the typical one body part per week with four to five sets per exercise, doing endless volume, then letting the muscle rest the full week before training it again. This process worked minimally, but much worse, it was slow, boring, and really didn't feel like I was accomplishing much at the gym. In search for faster progress, I stumbled across the early training programs of Casey Viator and Arthur Jones. One set to failure, all out, brutally heavy weights, testing yourself every single time you step foot in the gym with the goal to hit a PR. One more rep from last time or more weight on the bar. That mentality spoke to me. At 18 years old, it resonated with me on a very deep level. And on paper, it absolutely made sense. Push harder than last time and grow. Simple and effective. I plugged away at a basic full body HIIT training system for weeks, training only one separate body part, but taking it to absolute failure. Within just a few weeks of this training, I knew I was gonna run into some issues. I was training so hard that I was literally dragging myself out of the gym after each session. 
There were days where I would train in the morning or the afternoon, and I'd literally be so fatigued from the training session, performing or comprehending day-to-day -day tasks were even a challenge. That might sound like an exaggeration, but anyone who's trained this way knows exactly what I'm talking about. And the fact is, I would have been willing to continue experiencing this as a trade-off for more muscle and strength, but the results weren't even justifying the downsides, as my progress was pretty much non-existent during this time. Eventually, I understood that because this training was so demanding every single time I stepped foot in the gym, my nervous system was accumulating so much fatigue session to session, and even though my muscles might be recovered from such low volume, systemically, my body was never ready to hit a PR. Realizing this, I adjusted my training, started researching more infrequent styles of HIIT training, and eventually implementing Menser's ideas. This unfortunately led to lots of detraining. I was in the gym only once every four to five days, hitting body parts as infrequently as eight or so days at a time, and my progress actually started going backwards. Completely frustrated with this system, I eventually adjusted my training even more to a system similar to Yates' blood and guts training. But even after that, I found one very common trend with any type of HIIT training. That is, if you really push yourself to failure, to true muscular failure, all out on every single set, every single time you're in the gym, your nervous system will carry a largely disproportional amount of fatigue than your muscles will. The truth is one to three, or even up to five working sets on a muscle group, it's not a lot to recover from muscularly, especially for an advanced bodybuilder who has the nutrition in check, sleep is on point, and has built a decent work capacity up over the years. But once you start taking your training to all out levels of intensity, every single time you step foot in the gym, you'll start running into issues. In simple terms, what this is referring to is that sets done close to failure produce a great amount of stimulus for muscle growth and sets done to complete muscular failure might produce slightly more muscle growth, but come with a largely disproportionate amount of fatigue on the entire body. Many people will say this is a trade-off, but in my experience, and something I've experimented with over my entire training career, is that this trade-off just doesn't make sense and is the major reason I see HIIT training being ineffective for many individuals. With all that said, it might sound like I'm anti-HIIT and don't recommend this system. And if you've been a follower of my channel for some time, you know I'm a big proponent of higher volume training using many old school training methods. That's what I've found to produce the greatest results for myself, as well as many others that I've worked with over the years. The bottom line is, the best results will come from training with the appropriate level of intensity to match the training volume. The more you scale the volume up, the more you need to keep failure training in reserve. The fewer sets you're performing in the gym, the more you'll need to train closer to failure or even at failure completely to achieve a large enough stimulus for growth. The problem arises on each end of the extreme when you go too far off the deep end with any one approach. This is where HIT falls short. The extremely low set training to compensate for such high intensity leaves the muscles with a lower stimulus for growth and the nervous system with a huge amount of fatigue. Now the same can be true on the opposite end of the spectrum with high volumes as well. If you go in the gym and you're training a muscle group with 30 sets, yet none of them were intense, you're probably not going to build much muscle mass. If you feel like your training is stale and you're not getting the results you want, I encourage you to look at how your training is structured over a long period of time. Don't focus on only hitting a PR in the next training session, but ask yourself, how can I set up my training plan so that next month, next year, and even further down the line, I'm still progressing. Many people sabotage their own progress by trying to force progression from session to session. When the truth is, if they just stepped back a little and focused and moved forward consistently over weeks, months, and years, they would build muscle at a much more steady and consistent pace. If you personally have any experience with HIIT training, I'd like to hear your feedback in the comments below. And if you're looking to build your physique with proven old school bodybuilding training methods, I encourage you to check out my five day mass game program in the description. Or if you wanna work with me directly, check out all of my links below. All right, guys, that's it for the video. If you want to see more of the best original bodybuilding content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.